What's up, man? Today we're here in Torch Cigar Lounge. We're gonna go in there and speak with the owner, Matthew. He invited us to come take a tour and get a quick interview with him. So we're gonna get his life story and see how he runs his business. Today, man. I don't know how you doing again. Man, appreciate you having us. He's the owner of Torch. Cigar Torch Cigar Lounge. Lounge. Yep. Uh, so I just want to start from the beginning. How did you grow up? Like, did you did you come from an entrepreneurial background? Like, did you have any mentors growing up that made you want to be an entrepreneur? No, <laughs> not at all, man. I'd I'd have any um, anybody give me that example of being an entrepreneur. This 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 thing of opening the Torch Cigar Lounge. It's something that happened a few years ago. You know, I'm, I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, born and raised. You know, grew up in a basic household. You know what I'm saying? My mom raised me and my two older sisters, and, and that's pretty much how I came up. When I got 18, I joined the Marine Corps. <laughs> I left the Marine Corps. And uh, my thing is that I was in the Marine Corps for 21 years. And then I worked at the VA. My thing is that it's all about a service for me. So mm -hmm. it's not so much about the entrepreneurial side of just jumping into a business, trying to make a business. Is that if you're gonna do a business in my mind, what are you gonna offer people? You know, you can offer people any kind of product out there, but I wanted to get a, a quality service to people. Quality service. That's what that was important to me. So. So I guess I ask, where did your love or interest in cigars come from? Like, do you remember the first time you ever smoked a cigar? I do remember the first time I smoked a cigar. I, mean, I remember the first time I was working for the VA and I was I was a trainer. I was a new employee trainer. And they had sent me to Baltimore back in, it wasn't too long ago, it's 2017. And um, I was up in Baltimore. So recent. Recent. Wow. Yeah, that's less than seven years ago. How Six long, years ago. How long has the lounge been open? Yeah, last year. I opened up last November 10th, uh, Marine Corps birthday last year. Wow. <laughs> so wow. opened up last year. Because opening a business was nothing on my radar. It wasn't on my radar. But when I went to Baltimore that year, and I, I was one of the guys in the class I was teaching. He came to me and said, hey, Matt. You ever smoke cigars? I man, I don't smoke anything. I never smoke. I always saw the negative part about smoking. So he said, why don't you go with me after class today about 5.30, we're going to go to the cigar lounge. I said, okay, man, I'm good with that. So he took an Uber <laughs> to the Davidoff Lounge in Fells Point uh, outside of Baltimore. He said, pick one out. I said, I don't know what I'm looking at. Don't even know <laughs> I know what I'm looking at. I don't know what a wild variety of them. <laughs> it was. And uh, he said, well, he picked me out a Davidoff cigar. It was a, more like a mild or medium uh, body cigar. A little shorty, I sat down, I went in the back of the room, in the back of their store, it wasn't a, a traditional lounge, it was just like they had a little room in the back, people sit down, BYOB, bring your own liquor, whiskeys, whatever, so about five people back there, so they came back and said, hey, welcome back here, I sat down with them, they said, what you smoking? I said, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what I'm smoking, they said, well, hey, drink this with it, so they paired it up for me, and I lit it up, my first puff was like, I just went limp. My whole body went limp. My whole body went limp. Seriously, it was just could, a great experience. I could, I could definitely relate to that. So, I'm guessing after you left Baltimore, you just started learning more about cigar, trying different ones. Before you even left Baltimore, I was, that night I was on, the, I was on my phone on Amazon trying to find out what a humidor was, yeah. trying to find out what type of cigar this I was smoking, and just getting more information about it. It just intrigued me. Yeah, you know, I got a kind of funny story about the humidor. I had a humidor and I thought it was seasoned. And I went and bought sixty dollars worth of cigars. Ooh. Next day I went in there and it was all stale. So, oh yeah. Yeah, so I had to let the lounge season it for me. So yeah, this is it's definitely something that you gotta be very knowledgeable of. So I guess I would ask, where did you begin? Where did the idea of starting a cigar lounge come from? Like what like did you wanna eventually start a business? Like was entrepreneurship on your mind or like you just so knowledgeable of cigars, and you just thought, you know what, I can open me a cigar line. Like, this is something I can see myself doing. No, it nothing like that at all, man. What, what it was is that once I started smoking, I got back to Nashville, and I still traveled some with the VA. I just started visiting different cigar lounges, man. And I just saw, you know, how different lounges operate, you know, what they had to offer. Pretty much, you can go to any cigar lounge in this country, and you're going to get the cigars. You're going to get mm -hmm. basic, same cigars. Because everybody, you know, they got, may have boutique cigars here. May have more premium cigars here, but you're gonna get pretty much the same 
cigars. Yeah. And so what I saw in other lounges that uh, when I said, well, what I want to offer, I want to offer something different. I want to offer a quality service. See, that's what I saw. And I, see, and I still said, man, I, this is nothing I, I want to do. I don't want to be an owner. I just want to enjoy smoking cigars and going to cigar lounges. It hit me about 30 years after I've been smoking cigars. I said, man, I, it was this lounge in Nolansville, Tennessee called Battleground. And I used to go to Battleground. Julius, Julian, he owned that cigar lounge over there. He's my mentor, matter of fact. <laughs> he opened the one down in uh, uh, Columbia, Battleground South. So he's my, he's my mentor. And this guy, and I saw how he operated his business. He, he went on a service mindset, trying to provide a quality service and a quality product. So about three years or so after, I talked to him. I said, hey, Julian, I'm looking at thinking about opening up a lounge. He said, if you're ready to come talk to me, and I'll open my books up to you. I'll show you my 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 pretty much my path, my my uh, my business plan, and how I did it. So I talked to him about it, and uh, initially, I thought it was just a fly by night mindset, you know, because a lot of people want to jump into something. Yeah. So I talked to him. He showed me the books. And I said, man, that's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of work. So at that same, the next year, I went down to Miami for an event uh, called Black Smoke Miami, and I talked to some of the guys there, uh, and it was right. Right before, I think COVID is just beginning to hit. It was in 20, late 2020. So they said we're going to start doing our Zoom calls before the actual event in January 2021. So I was talking to other guys all over the world, California, Maryland, Florida, Virginia. And we all did a Zoom call once a week to talk about the upcoming event. So I just put it out there. I said, hey, I'm looking to open a cigar lounge. Can y'all give me some, some info about it? And uh, they just threw knowledge at me. Wow. They just threw knowledge at me. And these guys didn't know me. Yeah. They just didn't know me, but that's how the cigar community is, man. And I, and I could definitely attest to that because it's like, you know, what I always tell people is, you know, like, when you go to a cigar lounge, you're going to see it's a certain type of person that's going to be. You know, it's like different people in there, but it's not like going to, like, a bar or something yeah. like that because, you know, it's rarely like, what are you going to see a fight in a cigar lounge? Like, oh, know, my everybody's goodness. chilling, relaxed, <laughs> got the good leather chairs, you know. Yeah. It's like a very calm environment, you know, and, you can run into different people and network and stuff like that. So, and, and I and I remember you just saying uh, you had a mentor early on, like starting wanting to start a business. And yeah. I know like sometimes when you know there's a business in the area and then you want to also open a business, you you can be looked at as competition. Yeah. So, and I think it was like it's very that was very cool that you know he took you under his wing, and went, like said when you're ready you can come to me and I open my books to you like. Speak on how important it is having a mentor when, like, starting a business. And do, and do you think you would be, like, your business would be where it is today without a mentor? Well, no, I wouldn't be. But I had more than just a mentor. I had people like Miriam. She helped me out a lot. Mm -hmm. She helped me out a lot. I appreciate it. Uh, but, man, a mentor is something that you got to have in your corner, man. you got to have people like her, Julian, and other people who who going to tell you the truth. Yeah. <laughs> and going to break it down to you. Say, hey, this is what you got to do. Don't be afraid to take a hit. Don't be afraid to be told no. Mm -hmm. Just go. Because she should tell you, we look from here, freaking Shelbyville for a building. <laughs> Just before we got started. And it was crazy. But uh, if you got a mentor, that mentor got to be honest. He got to be, had a moral courage to tell you what you think about doing, Matt, is wrong. Mm -hmm. Julian did that to me. He, he broke it down. Just listen. He's helped every lounge that I know of as a black owned lounge in this area. He's had his hand in. Wow. He's had his hand in. Everybody goes to him. Say, hey, this is what you do. Talk to Julian. He's like, the, I call him the godfather of the cigar lounges yeah. right here. <laughs> and that's what we call him. And, uh, and they said, man, this guy, he knows his business. You know, he's visited every lounge. He's, he knows he's, he's known throughout the cigar industry. Yeah. I mean, throughout the country and the world because he's been in uh, Nicaragua a few times, different farms down there. So. And uh, so that guy, he had the knowledge. He's been smoking 20 plus years. He's wow. retired Air Force. Me and him bump heads about the Marine Corps, the Air Force <laughs> all the time. But like I said, again, you got to have somebody in your corner that can tell you the truth. Just exactly. that moral courage is more important than anything. Being told this is what you need to do and just, you know, and be they, they're okay with it. No, they can't be okay with it because he broke it down to me, man. He said, listen, you want to do this. You don't want to do this. In offense, he said, don't do hookah in your cigar lounge. It's not a cigar lounge. You got hookah. You don't want that. You don't want uh, a DJ all the time. You yeah. want some live music. You want some DJ, but you want to keep it relaxed, yeah, calm, 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 and didn't do like R&B. Those those little things make a difference. 
And he said, you're going to get a lot of pushback from this and this. I mean, he helped me from everywhere from looking at my lease to when I got ready to do my liquor license, you know, everything. My, wow. hey, hey, what taxes I need to pay. I mean, people don't people forget about those. They look at, okay, I'm open. I got cigars. I got liquor. That's my, no, you got so many other yeah. <laughs> steps in there that people don't it's take a, a look lot, at. It's a lot yeah. more that goes into a business. Speaking on that, like, were there ever moments where you were discouraged or, you know, like, with, like the beginning and starting this, like, were moments where you was like, man, maybe I'll just go back to work my job or stay retired or, like, like, what kept you, like, to get to this point? Like, what type of mindset did you have to keep going even when, like, there was hurdles in the road or, things might have not went how you thought or something might have been more complicated or complex than what you thought it would be. Like, what kept you going to start this marathon? Well, what kept me going, man, is just my, I got a passion for cigars and smoking cigars and want to tell people about it. I love that. Like I said, again, I keep going back to service. I want to be able to serve people, man. That's all I did. I've been in, I'm, re I'm retired from the VA next week, 29th. September 3rd is my last day. Congratulations. I, I got 16 years, 38 years total service from Marine Corps and the Federal Service, 38 years total. Wow. And I said to myself, you know what? I said, man, and I said, the one thing I got from there is simple, service. You got to, I like, I have a desire and a passion to show people the quality and the benefit of smoking cigar. It's not a fad to me. It's not a, something that's fly by night. This is something that helps me relax. And I've been, like I said, 20 years ring. This has really helped me keep calm in my life. Yeah, yeah I, can, I can agree. I can it, agree it's helped that. me keep calm in my life. It, it's gave me a lot of balance, you know, and I feel so relaxed when I smoke one. Things are going tough. I mean, I grab a cigar. And the mm -hmm. thing about I've had today's, I said, man, I don't want to do this no more. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't do it. But what keep bringing me back, man, I see the people coming through. When we first got started, man, last year, it was like our first night open, we had nobody. Well, we had our grand open was fine. But after that, it was dead. <laughs> Nobody came through. So I got on, on a, what was it, a TikTok or something like that. Instagram. Instagram. And I started in a post. And, uh, you know, people slowly started coming in. And it was like, it was amazing, man. Since November last year to now, our customer base is quadrupled. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's out of control. Word of mouth. Guys come to tell me all the time, we're talking about you. They're talking about you. I said, is it good or bad? Yeah. <laughs> but no, they said, man, they people love Torture Gall Out. They love coming here. And every time they said something about Torture Gall Out, one of the first things come out of my mouth said it's service. They said, yeah. you're going to get great quality service, customer service. And because uh, I'm telling you right now, what I have to offer cigars, liquor, beer, wine, you can get that any place. Yeah. But here, we want to make sure we give people a quality service, customer service, make them feel like they're at home. That's what we want to make people feel like. That's why people like coming here, and that's what we like to do. Wow. And see, like, I've been to a few cigar lounges, like the one I met you at. Yeah, but, Up and Smoke. Yeah, Up and Smoke. But uh, I've never actually been to one that has, like, a full bar. Okay. I, maybe I haven't been around in the community long enough. I've been to, like, three. But, like I said, you know, I've never been to one that has, like, an actual bar in it. You know, like, when you walk in, you kind of get that cozy, comfy type vibe in here. So... Where did the name Torch Cigar come from? I, I, I imagine it come from, you know, Torch and the Cigar, you know. You know, a lot of people, you know, they starting a business, you know, they might want their name on it, you know, Matthew Cigars, you know. Matthew yeah, that's true, so, that's true. So what made you kind of, you know, separate it from yourself and make it more about the, you know, the business, the art? The art like, okay, you know. the art of cigar. That's, it's, 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 this may be corny, and it probably is corny to a lot of people, <laughs> but uh, that's okay. It's my corny. Yeah. And, um. I see. I served in the Marine Corps 21 years, man, and I and I tell people some Marine Corps, are, Marines are forged in fire, <laughs> and so I lose torch. Oh. You know, see, I use that. People don't understand the colors I have is is, is Marine Corps similar to Marine Corps colors, scarlet and gold, and Marine Corps emblem up on the wall. My English bulldog, you know, right there. Yeah. I own an English bulldog, <laughs> so yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. so. And then it, and the torch goes right along with lighting up a cigar. So I try to gel all that together. So and that, that's how I came up with it. In my mind, so it may sound corny to some people, but it's simple to me. That's how I came up with that. So, do you like for the future? Do you plan on expanding, maybe even franchising Torch, or like starting off local, like maybe have a location, or maybe on like the other side of Nashville? Or, or have you thought about? Have you thought that far about you know expanding and you know just coming with different locations, or even getting a bigger building? 
I mean, cause this is this is a beautiful building. You got like, like I said, the leather chairs, but you know, mm -hmm. really feeling the chairs you got. You know, it really gives you like that, like I said, that cozy type mm -hmm. of vibe. You know, that relaxed atmosphere. Yeah. So, I was just wondering, you know, do you think like, is this as big as you want to go, or do you plan on branching out? You know, maybe even opening up a lounge in Alaska or somewhere like that. You know? <laughs> That'd be nice though. <laughs> <laughs> but no. Uh, I am looking at trying to expand. I, we're looking now for a building. We're looking for another building. We're, we're, maybe our neighbors next door decide to move. I like to expand. Um, I'm telling you, we have exploded in our customer base, man. And people love coming here. So we need more space already. And it's, it's amazing, man. I, I look at my cigar sales. I mean, when you saw my humidor when I first opened, you probably said, man, you got a few cigars. We ordered three new cabinets that's going to be here next month. And we're gonna, they're going to be full. Wow. when they get here and so we have to expand yeah. we are looking at expanding um i got a good staff team man that that, that helps me look for buildings and she's an expert at it <laughs> she's an expert <laughs> at finding the building so yeah. we, we want to stay in laverne area rutherford county maybe go to antioch you know yeah. uh but you know but we want to stay in this area because this is a cigar desert when i say that I mean by that they may have places around that sell cigar like a liquor store sell cigar but they don't yeah, offer that they don't yeah. uh, cigar lounge experience and that's the big key yeah. You gotta have that cigar lounge experience, and so, oh, that's on the radar. That's definitely on the radar. Yeah. <laughs> Soon. <laughs> so, a year ago, so you opened last year in November. November tenth. So, did you see yourself being this far along a year? Like, <clears throat> what, what were your expectations? Like, did you, did you think things would go this good? Like, or did you just like just have faith and believe? Like, okay, I conclude this is gonna go good. Oh, I had no idea. <laughs> no idea. I had no idea. I just knew that I wanted to sell cigars and offer quality service. I didn't know people was gonna come to it, gravitate. I had no idea. And um, but it's just I'm thankful every day. Every day I walk in here, man. I look in the door and I come in. Me and my dog walk in. He sniff around. You know. <laughs> so it's just like it's just a great feeling to know that people support you because you're trying to do the right thing. And uh, I had no idea. I had no idea at all that it was going to be that uh, contagious, as I call it, that people want to come here. So I'm thankful that we made it to this level and we're still growing. That's the crazy part. We still, it, it, I, I see things that some people may not see in my mind, but I, I see something bigger coming uh, wow. for Torture Girl Lounge. You know? And I don't like talking about it because yeah. I, I like to just keep it in my head and, and just say, man, because uh, there's some things I did here that a lot of people didn't know about. I said, man, I didn't know he was going to do that. I know. <laughs> That's what I wanted to know. I, and I knew in yeah. my mind it was something, but I didn't know exactly what it was. But you know, sometimes you can be given a vision about something and say, okay, maybe you need to look at this vision and, and, and work for it. And then daily, you take those daily steps, it'll get you to that level. So, all right, there's more coming. There's more coming for Torch Cigar Lounge tonight. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to providing quality service in a bigger, bigger venue. That's what I'm looking at. So, okay. so. On just being a business owner, what is what are some disadvantages and advantages of being a business owner, in your opinion, from your experience? Disadvantages of business business owners that you never know if you're gonna have a customer that day. <laughs> you, <laughs> you never know if you're gonna anybody gonna come to the door. Like today, it seems slow, but I've had people come in already throughout the day because I got a lot of walking traffic buying cigars. You know, they may not have time because they come during the lunchtime. Yeah, a lot of people don't come in lounges and sit down. You know, they come and stock up and get exactly, exactly. their humidor. You know, so. You might have somebody come in and get a, a lot of sticks at one time yeah. instead of just getting one and sitting down. Yeah, and that's fine with me. Yeah. I, I like walking in traffic. Like I said, we had a couple of guys did that today, which is it's beneficial. But I just like seeing people in here. It seems like that you're doing business. And uh, so that's one of the disadvantages. You never know if you're going to have a business. This is a luxury business. Yeah. This is a luxury. And people, I tell my, tell my bartenders and everything, I'm oh, mad it's slow today. I said, it's okay. This is a luxury business. People have to make decisions to come here. That's a luxury out of their pocket that they're spending every day. I had days in here where it's been jammed. Mm -hmm. Then days have been like slow up from the time we open to the time we close. I mean, it's, it's been it's amazing. When we first started off, I was hoping to make $500 a week. <laughs> <laughs> the first month I said, I can't it's, pay the bill. Some, <laughs> yeah. like that, that wasn't no rent. That was, I, we didn't pay the rent. It's like, man, $500 this week? And rent's going to be this month, and then you got to pay electric bill, oh, yeah. <laughs> gas bill, and all this other stuff. So the disadvantage is not knowing. The disadvantage is not knowing what you're going to have. But like I said, again, 
if you provide that service, quality service to people, custom service to people, people are going to come. I mean, you, everybody walked through that door, we appreciate every last one of them. When they leave, we appreciate you coming through because you didn't have to come here. And that's it. So the advantage of, of is that knowing to satisfy that you satisfy a customer by coming to the door and you showing them, hey, hey, they walk through the door, hey, what can we do for you? You know, what can we do for you? Want some water, whatever? You know, sit down, smoke, they ask questions about cigar. I want to make sure that everybody understands that we're here to serve you. And that's it. So. So with you being an entrepreneur, well, do you have employees? Yeah, I got like six, okay. so seven. How many bartenders we got now? Seven, six. Seven bartenders. Yeah, six or seven, something like that. I don't know. Okay, so has this, do you feel like owning a business has given you more like free time in your life to do like things that you want to do? Like maybe, <laughs> oh, I'm going to go to Mexico next week. Or, <laughs> or you know, you, you just have, you know, being an entrepreneur, like does it give you more time to think about maybe other biz, business ventures? Oh, oh. No. Well, you work every day. <laughs> I work every day. Oh, okay. If you look at my schedule, the square, you said, uh, Matthew working from 8 a.m. to 1159 <laughs> every day, Monday through Sunday. Wow. Now, I have taken, because I had, like this past summer, I had to go to Vegas for, for a cigar convention, Premium Cigar Association. They had it every year. It's like a week long, a long, week and a half long event, but we got to go. You sh don't have to go, but you should go, because that's when you learn about cigars. You meet all the big hits. Big lead, big hitters in the lead in the in the industry, all the daggone Padermo guys, all the Padermo Padron guys, all the big heads in the in the industry, you know, to, to learn about cigar, to build your accounts, to the network, and I did that for a week, man. I was hating it, man, because I wanted to be back here every day yeah. in the fight, because I call it being in the fight here. I love being here with these guys, because uh, and I, but I was calling every day, of course, I was yeah, looking at the numbers every day, <laughs> you yeah. know. So it, I rarely take off, and I, I take off if I have to take off. But I'm here every day. Like I said, today it's going to be me and one bartender working. I don't know how I schedule that, but I schedule myself to work, close more. And I'm trying to ease away from that because I got three people who, who really know how to run the business while I'm not here now. Uh, they're my managers. They run it for me while I'm not here. But uh, I'm still here. They say, why are you here? When we're here, I said, leave me alone. I sit in the office and I just work, you know. And, I, you know, I also think it's like, you know, because sometimes, you know, people might have a business, but they're not passionate about that business. So it's like, mm -hmm. if you have a business that you're not passionate, passionate about, you're more likely, like if you can find someone to run it, you're less active in it. But with you being passionate about, you know, the service that you're giving and also, you know, just cigars, yeah. it's like, you would probably hang out in here even if you had other stuff. To yeah, do, like, exactly. Your business. Exactly. And, and I'm glad you said that because some people who, who may own the business, to me, they're just investors. Because I want to be involved with everything. I want to meet everybody come through that door. I want to get to know people. Employer I mean, exactly. I want to know. Oh, yeah, definitely an employee. You all can be an employee first. Yeah. Because, I mean, I go in there, clean the bathroom. I sweep the floor. I, I take the trash out. I empty the ashtray. Because if I see something, it has to get done. And that's what I want to see them, my employees see me doing. Mm -hmm. I want them to see me doing that. That's the way he do it. He clean. And they, they picked up on it pretty quick. And so why, they, they'll tell me, why are you doing that? That's what you pay us for. <laughs> and so I said it had to be done and they'll jump on it and it just makes them feel like okay if he can do that, those things I can do it too you know it's not like I'm too big I, I don't think I never get too big to do the basics that's how I feel about it doing the basics is what got you to where you're at so that's my opinion so me and my guy David here we both we 21 <laughs> we we are aspiring to be in your position one day like an entrepreneur like you know what I'm saying got the lounge, you're looking to expand, open up more lounges, or, you know, get a bigger building, mm -hmm. you know, and you really just like, it seems like you're really knowledgeable in the business that you're in, so, with us wanting to start a business, anybody else out there that want to start a business, what, what advice would you give to them? Find something that you love, first of all, that you got a passion about, you got to have passion, just don't start a business because you want to make money, you, you start a business to make money, you're going to fail, in my opinion, because you're not in it for the right reason. Don't go in there looking at, oh man, this business plans tell me I can make this much money in about two years, this much money in three years. If that's all you're looking at, you know, what are you, what are you there for? You forgot about service. You forgot about, you know, your passion. Do you really like doing that? It's like working another, another job. If you open a business, you're just going to be working another job for another 10, 20, 30 years. You don't want to do that. You want to do something that you love. You know, you guys seem to love what you're doing right now. Yeah, yeah. And, and see, that's, that's, a, that's big. Cause I see a lot of people in your industry who just 
do it because it's a quick buck. Get, yeah. the, get the followers or whatever. But if you love what you do and enjoy what you do and you don't mind serving people and helping people, you'll be successful. That's just my opinion. You hey man, man, thank you for coming appreciate out here. I'm glad I got a chance to meet you up and smoke, man. Yeah, man, it was, it was real nice meeting yeah. you, man, and I appreciate you having us around. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I always pass on my business cards, so yeah. come back down and visit. <laughs> like I said, I appreciate yeah. y'all guys coming to Torch the Lounge, man. Yeah, no problem. We will definitely be back. Thank you, man. Appreciate no it. All right.